So, you just finished printing something, and now you have to fill in every single one of those layer lines in order to go ahead and get the finish that you want. But how do you do that? Is this your first time 3D printing? Are you an absolute pleb to this entire process and need a step-by-step -step guide or multiple different options as to how to go ahead and do that? Well, you've come to the right place. So you're looking for the right way to go ahead and fill in those printer lines, or maybe you're looking for a new way to fill in those printer lines. Whether you're here for a new way or an old way, or just to watch me talk for the next, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes, welcome. We're gonna go ahead and dive into all the different ways to go ahead and fill in the printer lines when working with your 3D printed model. Now, this video is just basically gonna be one big pros and one big cons. It's gonna be a lot of, this is why you should do this, and this is why you should do that. So, over the years of me doing all of this 3D printing and collecting a bunch of stuff that is just kind of sitting and gathering dust, I've found multiple different ways as to how to go ahead and fill in those printer lines and also the seam lines as well uh, to kind of get the best method and the best overall uh, look for my 3D prints once I go ahead and actually finish them. Now, the first method that we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is the Bondo method, the Bondo spotting and glazing putty. So this is gonna be the red putty that everybody references and uses when you go ahead and actually do the uh, filling in of some lines. So this is the basic method. You basically just get a tube of the red stuff and you smear it on with either your fingers or whatever you wanna go ahead and use in the applicator wise. Uh, and that's gonna fill in the lines basically. Uh, it's a rinse and repeat process of just filling, sanding, filling, sanding. So Fs, Fs in the chat. In terms of the actual usage of it and how it works, it works well. It's a very reliable method for cheap. So if you just wanna go ahead and do this over and over and over again, because that's basically what you're gonna be doing, this is a good method. So red paste, filler primer, sand. That That's basically it. It's, it's the simplest process ever. Uh, a bulk of the work is really gonna come from the sanding, but obviously this is for the deeper cracks, grooves, crevices, even the smaller ones as well. You can go ahead and obviously apply this and it'll work really well for you. Now, with the Bondo, the red spotting and glazing putty, that favorite of ours, you can also go ahead and mix it with acetone. So this is method number two, the acetone and Bondo method. So you're gonna play chemist here and you're basically gonna go ahead and go into your garage or in your home or wherever you go ahead and do your creative endeavors and you're going to go ahead and mix together the bondo and the acetone and that's going to go ahead and really fill in the lines in terms of uh, having it more liquidy so once it goes ahead and seeps into those lines once it dries uh, it'll have filled in a little bit more than when you just smear on the paste now this method is good it is time consuming because you have to mix it you have to apply it you have to i mean everything's time consuming what am i saying but anyways um it's a good method at the end of the day it's a good method because it helps to seep in the lines a little bit deeper uh, and I like the results that I got from it. And it's also a little bit easier to go ahead and apply it because you basically dip it, a brush into the solution rather than like using your fingers to smear on just the paste. So you use a brush, you apply it that way. You can do one or two coats, depending of course, how many times you need to go over it. And depending on, of course, the layer lines as well. But then of course you would sand it and then spray it with filler primer once you're done. I like this method. It's not my favorite method, which we're about to go ahead and get into, but it's a good method. So once again, it's cheap, it's effective. You probably have, if you already have the Bondo and spotting glazing putty, then you can probably just find acetone, you know, somewhere around the house, maybe in your sister's bathroom or your mom's bathroom. The third method is using resin and a black light in order to go ahead and 
of course, cure the resin. So after you're finished uh, using the black light on your room to absolutely scrub everything off of there and uh, get rid of all the evidence from whatever you might have been doing, you can use the black light to actually cure the resin once you go ahead and put it on the actual 3D print. Now, the resin, the good part about that is, is that it's going to seep into it because it's a thicker type of liquid. It's going to seep into the lines. It's going to make the outside a little bit more durable, uh, but you're going to be sanding it anyways. And then it's once again, a rinse and repeat process. It's going to be the filling, sanding, filler primer, fill it based off of what you need to do. You might need to do two or three coats, but that's really the simplest way to say and and how to explain it so the pros of this of course are going to be obviously using the resin and creating more of a protective outer shell um, and also filling in the lines a little bit better with a more durable and a little bit of a stronger material this one is definitely time sensitive uh, because you have to go ahead and of course uh, do it in small batches when you apply the resin uh, and then you do the, the curing of the light over top of it. The curing actually doesn't take that long, but it's just, you know, the rinse and repeat process to do it. I think when I had done it in my previous build, it took me anywhere between about 30 minutes to go ahead and actually fully get the entire thing. But I was also working with a bigger print. So obviously with a smaller print, it's not gonna take that much time. The last and final method, which I found to be actually quite the best and my favorite method moving forward in terms of saving me time and really filling in those layer lines uh, and getting me to my finished product is resin plus, plus, wait for it, wait for it, talcum powder. Now you can also use baby powder, but I've watched uh, a couple different videos that have popped up randomly. And uh, this gentleman was going through the differences between uh, just the resin and the resin with the talcum powder. Uh, the talcum powder really helps to seep in those lines and it makes the resin a, actually a little bit of a thicker paste than it already is. It's not really a paste, it's a thicker liquid, should I say. Uh, it obviously changes the viscosity and it helps to go ahead and uh, create almost like I wouldn't say a new layer over top of it but it helps to go ahead and, and fill in the grooves and the cracks just a little bit better uh, I like this method the best uh, from the results that I've seen from it basically in terms of you know retrospects in the whole grand scheme of things uh, normally what I would do is I would go ahead and do the Bondo spotting and glazing I would sand it filler primer go back to square one, rinse and repeat over and over and over again. With the resin and talcum powder, I've only had to do this process twice to go ahead and get me the finished result that I'd like to see. So all in all, that's probably gonna be the best method and your best method in terms of it. Uh, the pros, of course, are going to be the results that you fetch from it and the look of the finished product, especially if you're trying to achieve a you know movie like replica or a movie like look of a prop or you know helmet that you're creating the cons is of course going to be that it's time sensitive uh, and it might be a little bit of an upfront cost if you're you know just first purchasing uh, a thing of photopolymer resin and the black light and of course the talcum powder so on the on the higher end of things it might be a little bit more of an expense to your wallet but it's worth it in the end if, if that's the route that you wanna take. A method that I like in order to fill in some deeper cracks, or should I say seams, uh, if you have to go ahead and of course split up a 3D print, is regular Bondo. Now, what I mean by this is the Bondo where it's uh, one part the white cream and one part the blue hardener, and you mix those two together, uh, and then you go ahead and smear it on. So it's a, it's a little bit of a two-step process there, but the reason why I like it is because once it goes into those cracks and crevices, it not the cracks and crevices, sorry, the uh, bigger seams and the lines and the edges, it really helps to keep those filled in and it almost helps and acts like a glue almost to keep the pieces together as well. Of course, I've already glued all these pieces together at this point and soldered the insides of it, but it's just an extra step uh, to make sure that those seams don't, you know, come apart while you're sanding or working with it or manipulating it in any sort of way. Now, where it kind of sees a fault or a flaw is the fact that it hardens and it hardens 
really, really hard. So, I don't know why I just said that. Um, once it actually cures and hardens, it's a little bit of a thicker resistance than the actual Bondo spotting and glazing putty. You have to put a little bit more rub and buff and, and grease, elbow grease into it in order to go ahead and sand this down. Uh, and it's it's thicker and it just lays on a little bit harder. So I, I would definitely suggest, you know, it's a little bit more labor intensive to go ahead and actually sand it down. But in the grand scheme of things, it, it works well for, for what it does. So normally what my process looks like now is if I have a big seam or a big gap that I need to go ahead and fill, I'll use the two-part Bondo, and I will go ahead and fill that in, and then I will take the time to go ahead and do my mixture of resin and talcum powder, and then I'll put that layer on after I've done like, you know, 60 to 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, I'll put that layer on, then after that, I'll sand that with about 80 grit, and then I'll hit it with filler primer, our first coat, then it's more sanding, then it's another layer of resin and talcum powder, and by then, that's really what I, you know, it's, it's at where I like to see it, uh, and then it gets a little bit more sanding, and then another two coats of filler primer, and then after that, that's gonna be, you know, the rest of it is history in terms of sanding, just getting it to the, you know, the finish that I want it to, so I'll hit it with the, you know, 120s, 150s, 180s, 220s, 400, you know, do the wet sanding, etc., etc. yada, 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 you already know this, come on, come on, you know this. Uh, that's what my process looks like, and uh, the helmet that I'm working on now is gonna be the fruit of those labors and the new uh, techniques that I've been utilizing to go ahead and get that kind of finish. So, in not this video, but the next video, you will see the the results of that, and you'll be able to see, you know, that I put my money where my mouth is. So, this video is probably going to be a little bit shorter, but that's okay. I appreciate you watching nonetheless. If you liked what you saw today, and you would like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There have been so many new subscribers to the channel, and I thank you for watching and i thank you for coming out and watching and uh seeing me uh, yap and talk about some 3d printing things and along the way if you gathered some information and got some help that's great that's what i'm here for if you have any questions comments or would like to discuss things further with me you can go ahead and either leave a comment or hit me up on my instagram at gstudios underscore art and i will see you all in the next video and if i don't see you good morning good evening and good night